folks, it's me, Lorelan. I am here today to do a little tag video. This is the New Year New Books tag created, what was I gonna say, featured by my friend Ariel. No, it's created by my friend Ariel over at Ariel Reads. She's wonderful. And she said when she made this tag that she wants to make more videos this year. And I really hope she does. The Parent Trap is on TV. So I want to finish quickly so I can watch more of that. The first question is, how many books do you plan to read this year? I think I've talked about this before, but I don't like to set myself a number because I don't want to be disappointed. Although I read 72 books last year and like low key, I'll be disappointed if I don't read as many, but I'm just trying not to put that pressure on myself. Reading any books is a nice thing, right? I keep seeing this pillow out of the corner of my eyes and thinking it's my cat, and then when I look and there's no cat, I'm like, I must have seen a ghost. But it's obviously not a ghost. I don't believe in ghosts. Next, do you have any reading challenges for the new year? Not like officially. I, for the last year, have kind of tried to read about one nonfiction book every month, and I've also tried to keep my reading um, like a little bit diverse. What was the first book you bought or checked out from the library? Two Stories by Sally Rooney. And that was also the first book I read of the year, which is the next question, what was the first book you read? So it was that, Two Stories by Sally Rooney. Number five, what are three five-star predictions you have for this year? If I even read these, I would go for Cast by Isabel Wilkerson, The House on the Cerulean Sea by T.J. Klune, and Little Weirds by Jenny Slate. Those are all books that... Oh, there's a loud airplane. I'm gonna pause. What is one book you want to read purely because of the hype from last year? Probably House on the Cerulean Sea. It's something that, like, I never in a million years would have picked up just from, like, the cover and the summary, but just seeing video after video of people reading this book and adoring it, I, I must love it, right? Like it's irresistible, it seems. What was one book you meant to read last year but didn't? Probably the most egregious of those is The Bluest Eye by Toni Morrison. I picked that up at a book sale at the end of 2019 and I was so excited and I still haven't read it. What book have you already DNF'd? This isn't a DNF but I did start and kind of get sidetracked from what was the book called? Oh, it was House of Correction by Nikki French. I thought I was in the mood for a thriller. And then when I started reading it, it kind of turned out that I wasn't, or at least not that thriller. Um, it was like the narrator was in prison um, for a crime that she doesn't believe she committed. And it was just stressing me out. So I Stopped. But I do, well, I've read one Nikki French book and liked it, so probably someday I might come back to that. But yeah, for now, it's a DNF. What genre do you want to read more of this year? So I just finished a sci-fi book that I loved, and it made me think maybe I should start reading sci-fi. Question number 10 is, are you unhauling any books to make room for new ones? I am not, like, actively doing this at the moment. But I have in the last couple of weeks acquired a number of books and I I don't have room on my shelves, they're full. Um, so I am going to have to say goodbye to a few, although this house has like, we have a lot of like hidey holes around for, for books, not hidey holes, they're bookshelves. I have been known to be like, to, to, to set aside some books to donate and then last minute decide Ugh, I can't part with these. I'm just going to put them on a shelf in another room. And so I'm probably just going to do that, especially because right now donating is a whole thing, you know? So yeah, not really unhauling, just <laughs> moving. This is why I, I had to stop buying books because it's really difficult for me to get rid of them unless I'm moving. Oh, he's giving me the dirtiest look. He really doesn't like me my videos. Back to the questions. Look at last year's Goodreads winner in every category. Are there any that you agree or disagree with? Are there any winners that you're interested in reading? This is a great question, but it also requires that I go on Goodreads. I have kind of 
transitioned to keeping track of my reading on Storygraph instead of Goodreads and I'm loving it and I actually have started rating books on Storygraph. Like a lot of the reason that I don't is just because I don't feel comfortable making my ratings public. Also I kept finding myself like comparing the number of books I read to like what my friends were reading and that's just like stupid. Anyway, I've been really enjoying just using um, Storygraph uh, because then it's all a secret. Nobody knows what I'm reading. I'm just going to look at like a few categories that I read and have, a, have an opinion on. First one I want to talk about is graphic novels and comics. I have not read any of the Heartstopper books and by all accounts they are lovely, but I really really wanted to see Dancing at the Pity Party by Tyler Fetter win. Um, Tyler is an amazing person and this book is just so beautiful. I don't know her personally, I just uh, kind of know her from the internet, but I think that it's, it's a book that is just really special and I think can help a lot of people. It's about um, Tyler losing her mom and what it was like, you know, he try, starting to heal from that and how even 10 years later it still sucks. It's a really excellent book that didn't get the votes that it deserved just because it wasn't as widely read. Congrats to Alice Oseman, I'm sure you deserve it, but I would have loved to see Tyler win this. Fiction, okay so The Midnight Library by Matt Haig won and I have no problem with that per se and that's one that I probably would be interested in reading although I am truly blown away by the idea that Such a Fun Age and Real Life by Brandon Taylor are on here and they like aren't even in the top three. Like I'm sorry more people voted for American Dirt than Such a Fun Age. Huh, the Guest List by Lucy Foley won Mystery Thriller. I really liked that book. Is it the best thriller I've ever read? No, but I haven't read any of these other books so I can't really compare. I feel like When No One Is Watching is probably just like a more complex book from what I've heard about it. I don't think that 81,000, that all 81,000 people who voted for Barack Obama's book read it. I think that they just voted because they like Barack Obama. Number 12 is if you could recommend one book to everybody else to put at the top of their TBR list, what would it be? Probably Such a Fun Age by Kylie Reid. I think it's just such a fun and compelling book that could really hook just about anybody but also it is so sharp in its commentary and I think that pretty much anybody could, at least any white person, white person, could come away having learned something, you know? Also, the book that I personally have probably recommended to the most people from last year was Know My Name by Chanel Miller. I bought it for several different people for Christmas and um, obviously, I wouldn't recommend it to everyone because subject material is potentially very triggering. Um, but for anybody who is interested and who can read about sexual assault, um, I think that it's like one of the best possible books you could ever read in your life. So yes. And then the last part, of course, is tagging. I'm just going to tag one person, and that is Hillary at Melted Books. Okay. Wow. This has been a disaster. Thanks for hanging in there with me. Um, I hope you guys are alive. All right. <laughs> That's all for me. Like and subscribe if you want. Love you all. Okay, bye. You know, some days you can do things, and some days you just can't. So much.